for the rest of the series. We saw a first pick on Malfurion, and we saw some success with Michael Udall and Deckard. I wonder if they'll switch that up, whether they're going to take map control, whether they want that first pick, and how they're going to play around that, because I think Malf and Deckard are going to be very important in the series. Well, Endemic picks first pick, so Simplicity will take us to Volskaya Foundry. I got a feeling that I mean, this is another hammer map. <laughs> That's true. Is, does it warrant a first ban? Because you're not going to first pick Hammer if you're on Endemic. That'd be a little bit crazy. But it is conceivable that you could pick it in your first two picks if you're Simplicity, since you are going to be second pick. Endemic had committed to the Tracer already by that point. Hmm. Maybe uh, we'll see not as high of a priority on the Tracer because of that, or if they're going to move back into that again, a Sergeant Hammer pick this go around. Well, we saw the Genji ban. I think Genji ban is going to be crucial to make sure and have that type of success because Genji coming in as the potential executioner, hitting that swift strike, especially if you build into it, then it does become much more difficult. So likely going to see a Genji ban no matter what, but if they're not going to ban Genji, then maybe they've got another strategy up their sleeve. Some other Volskaya Foundry picks we have to keep in mind are the Thrall because of his sustain and uh, his control over the points, Earthquake and the fights there. Chromie, we have seen a fair amount of Chromie from a couple of different teams, but especially on this map too. Yeah, Dainsky we know can definitely bring the pain mm -hmm. on that. And then Hosty himself, depending on who's playing that role between him and K1. So that will be something. And again, when we saw in Dem or excuse me, when we saw Simplicity on this the other day, they were the ones running the Tracer, except it was with a Johanna Stitches, which it was a lot for Hosty to do. He said himself that he thought he made a lot of mistakes, but I feel like he probably needed a little bit more help. And even if those mistakes, maybe those mistakes are a little bit more limited when there's not so much there. The thrall you said, I think is something that Zuna might have even played a little bit when they played a three melee role earlier this year. So yeah. it's something that they definitely know how to pull off. We'll see if that does come into play as we enter here on Volskai. And of course, Malfurion and Deckard Kane because of those sustained heals. Lucio, I think it's an Ock face hero. Lucio does have good sustain, but I don't see that happening. I don't see it happening here. June, this is the map where June would play it, yep. the mid-season brawl, when sort of choked out of some of those sustain supports. Aha. Did, is this the map where Endemic first picked Deckard Kane before? Towers of Doom is where they did that. But they're not afraid to. Just what changes do we see? Obviously, the the first fight, the first protector, not as impactful since the changes. Mm -hmm. You and I have, have highlighted that a few times this weekend about the experience changes on the fort. It looks like a very different map now with these changes. Does that mean if we're going back to a long game, yeah, give them the dunks. Asmo. Mm-hmm, Asmo um, style. You know who also stacks really well into the late game? Give them some pepper, fill them full of daylight. Oh, you're just mentioning both of the heroes who are going to have reworks. Yeah, I see. I see what we're doing here. Genji Band. For I'm hyped for those, by the way. Me too. Oh, All right. Begins. I almost wondered if Endemic was, or Simplicity was considering banning Deckard, just taking both of those supports, which seem to be the top two off the board. Well, but no, Genji's a lot to deal with. I think one thing that if you are going to go Sergeant Hammer again, that Decker does have relatively respectable cooldowns when it comes to getting the lockdown. And so if you're afraid of being rooted, is that when you use your level four unstoppable, your self cleanse? Or, and if that happens, is there going to be somebody else potentially on that front line of Endemic that's like, well, if you're going to use it, we have a second wave of CC coming. So that is something that could be manipulated there, but simplicity, I don't know if they'd commit to a hammer this early, but. If they're afraid of it being banned out, this might be the time they have to. Meanwhile, for simplicity, uh, Hanzo would be up for hosty. Wow. And it's I, again, I think that they're afraid that it's going to get banned out in mm -hmm. that second slot. And Garrosh, again, is that hero. When I talk about manipulating, it's a matter of if I put my scroll down to root you and you cleanse that, then all of a sudden Garrosh can walk in and flip you out. And then you have to make up your mind on, are you OK with being rooted? And is there going to be some follow up? And you take away one of those options. And now Endemic, they've got to search for a backup plan. Heroes that were banned by Simplicity 
ETC for the stage dive to get on top of Sergeant Hammer, although the blast can uh, push him away and then you get the armor, the extra armor, as long as you're in siege mode. So I don't know if that's necessarily as scary at all as the Genji. They already have yeah. the Genji ban. The cooldown reduction on your E is relatively short, which, why is, which is why you can cycle them. And they're going to get the Thrall, which is a hero that you can get in. You can get a root for yourself. You can follow up root. You can also work your way in. You can also poke very well. Yes. And speaking of poke, Chromie. Got a little bit of poke herself. That's why I mentioned Chromie, because it's a good Chromie battleground. This is where we see her most often. And against the Sergeant Hammer, guess what's happening when you siege up every single time? Drop a bomb. lot of bombs. A whole lot of them. I, uh, another hero. Man, I played a bunch of heroes last night. I talked about the Butcher. I played Chromie last night on uh, Alterac. Yeah. And I got the bonus damage, and I went rewind, you know, because I was having a little bit of fun. I got the bonus damage, and I rewound an Ana. Feel bad if, if you know who you are. And, and I did a full combo with Quantum Overdrive. <laughs> it, it deleted him. And I felt so happy and so mean, bad at the same time. You mean stuck in a loop the second? No, 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 no. Because you get the bonus damage when you're standing in the objective. And so, like, my damage just destroyed her. Oh, yeah. And I was like, well, that, that, that looked like it hurt. It's so much fun. And, you know. Probably not for that. Long. And there was a hammer on the other team, so I was already stacked. So yeah. that's why I was thinking of it. Yeah, that's gonna be that's, that's a really good point that you bring up. It's likely to be pretty quick stacking here for our Chromie player. Blaze banned by Endemic, um, a an effective way of dealing with all of the damage is of course the bunker, but also temporal loop. Just hop in the bunker. Yeah, that but is definitely one way to hide. There is still into the fray. Into the fray, which we've seen, it's a very difficult thing to pull off, but you also, again, have the self-cleanse if you are the hammer. It's just a matter of support-wise. We right. saw the Malfurion ban, and then the Deckard pickup. That's generally been the high priority. If you're going to go Tiger JK special Kerosene, you don't get cleansing touch until 16. And that's the hard part is, can you deal with that a cleanse? Do you have the tools? Is Divine Palm enough at level 10 to deal with that? Garrosh is going to be fine. They're going to hold that pick as we see a Phoenix and a Dahaka come in here. So we'll see what that support ends up being. Phoenix has Warp, Dahaka has Burrow, a whole lot of self-survivability abilities. Even knowing that that might be a Karazim that doesn't get the cleansing touch until 16. Last two picks for Endemic. We're looking for B-Kids tank. And then possibly another melee, just depending on how they want to play this throw. Well, you don't have the self-cleanse from Iron Skin, so then you have to look at heroes that have mobility. You know, if you really want to go all in, which I doubt we'll see at this time, Anubrak would be there. But I think that something like a Muradin, in case you get tossed in, you can dwarf toss out, has been kind of the go-to, and it's B-Kid, of course. So, so. B-Kid classic. Yeah. Are you expecting this thrall to be Cure? Or do you think this would be something like Biggie flexing over, and then we see Cure play? Uh, I mean, there's a part of me that I'm OK with more melee, but I think you need another range. I think mm -hmm. you need more sustained damage. You've already got good poke between Thrall and Chromie, but I feel you need some type of sustain to also deal with the Garrosh. Or. OK, but this does bring up the Karazim option, because Air Ally, you get a couple charges. It has lower health. It's easier to kill. But if you're wanting to reveal that Zeratul who gets anywhere near the hammer, you simply just put that down, and it makes it a targetable hero. I don't know if I, again, you made the, the mention. Sergeant Hammer, self-cleanse, Garage, self-cleanse, and into the fray. Phoenix can warp out, Dahaka can burrow. At that point, you only have one vulnerable target. If you're afraid of temporal loop, this might be the time for a, a Kerasim. Mm -hmm. You don't always advocate for it, but this, this is a good op option, I think, if you're going to go that route. They switched to Uther. No Understandable with the possible burst coming in toward Endemic and the stun locking between Muradin and Thrall. Deckard Kane behind that. I would almost say that Uther on Volskaya should almost not be a thing because the amount of sustain and how long the fights are. But this is a lot of burst damage. Zeratul, momentary burst, not super condemning early game. Thrall obviously has a little bit of poke. That's where most of your splash damage is going to come from. And then Chromie has to hit several skill shots. And, you know, you don't have to necessarily worry about the huge burst combos coming in early because Zeratul, obviously, much stronger late game. So this was going to be one of those few times where I think Uther on Volskaya is viable. I mean, 
Obviously, you've got the cleanse, you've got the divine shield, you've got the armor to, to deal with a lot of that, and you can stun the Zeratul who comes in. That's generally a counter that we've seen on this battleground, so a lot of good tools, I think, for simplicity. We do need to remember that Tiger JK is the new player on this team, and with all of the self-surviving uh, abilities that this team has, if you pick cleanse, if we have hand of protection, communication is going to need to be on point from this team so that things aren't overlapping. But I agree with you, trying to deal with the burst. There is some interplay between Uther Divine Shield and Void Prison 2, and uh, possibly being able to separate a team, uh, somebody away with an isolation kill. But let's see how it works out between these two teams. Simplicity's up one game in this best of five over Endemic, and that is a different Chromie build. Oh, baby. It's We're going quick match special. Deep breathing. Now, do we also get the upgrade at four, or do you really need sustain with bronze talents? At level four, it's just a, a bigger area. Yeah, 25% increased area with that enveloping assault. I'm not sure. I mean, this goes into single target burst a, a heck of a lot heavier, but this is totally a quick match special. You get Dragon's Eye with this thing. Actually, I think one time I saw this, it was with Mobius, and then you're not as hampered by the uh, Mobius damage reduction. And I'm pretty sure damage? that one lost. Because yeah. I Mobius loop for me, Gilly. I get it, but I'm pretty sure its win rate is somewhere like negative 67% or something like that. Well, I have a friend that pulls it off, so I don't think it's negative 67. But okay. I understand. Yeah, you so want to pack a punch, then having a... Deep breathing, Dragon's Eye as a Void Prison drops this is pretty nice. Yeah, I mean, it could be a thing. I think here, if you're looking for sustained damage, the reason, like, your W build doesn't do so well, there's going to be a stack there, is because it takes too long on cooldown and you're strictly relying on your Qs. This might be the map in the battleground where, if you're looking for sustained Mobius loot, reduces the damage, but it lowers the cooldown. And generally, you're lacking that burst. There so maybe... you are. There it is. Oh, my. Okay, I didn't expect this much. So now I do kind of wonder if we'll get that level 7 Mobius. Although Dragon's Eye does seem pretty cool. This series is so much fun. You know people in chat are having a heyday with this build. Mm-hmm. No Crash Lightning. Still Echo of the Elements. So good on this map. It feels like Crash Lightning is all but gone. Which Zuna might be too. Mike's coming in. Makes it out. That was a pretty heavy gank attempt and yeah. continuing to stack. Two stacks, those are the only two that we've seen. Chromie, one stack, is that even considered a stack? I guess you start at zero. One stack on Q build, it's hard because it's it's been out of reach. And there's not a true real solo lane that they're really establishing at this point in the game. Yeah, the try lane I would have expected to get a little bit more than that. Simplicity have a lot of focus toward this top lane, and that may mean that they're very focused toward the second control point specifically, but also, like we saw in the last game with that Sergeant Hammer, just picking a place and trying to stick with it is very important with that Sergeant Hammer. Now that the control point is going to be unlocking soon, I expect that place to change as they get set up around that control point. I feel like I'm living in a different world. We're a quarter of a, about a fifth of a level away from finding out what that level five, seven talent for Chromia mm -hmm. is going to be. But last night, I actually played the proper build just because I felt like, you know, I should be meta for once. This is the proper build now. It is Mobius. Okay. So you get more sustain, more area damage, but you got to stack it up if you're really going to find it. Cure, the hunt is on. Nice knockback there by Hosty. Good body blocks. Cure, as much as you juke, there's no jive in this one. No, and with the turret down, this might be the start of Simplicity getting the first initial channel as B-Kid backs off. There will be plenty of time to try to get back into this, but for the moment, Michael Udall trying to set up Big E for some stacks. That was cool to see with the Roger Cube and slow there. It's going to be another stack. Zuna holding the top lane, trying to deal with the camp there as Endemic already cleared out the camp from the side of Simplicity. Turret still got a little bit of life on it as King Caffeine holding point for the moment. Another stack there for Biggie and completing that once you complete it. Nice interrupt Whoa. there on the dwarf toss and Beacon gonna fall. The cleanse, or excuse me, the armor and the self cleanse there for Hosty to deal with the impending damage coming in from Biggie. 
Tiger shows Murden who has the better hammer. Getting that hammer of justice and the B kid kill half a level ahead is simplicity now as they'll channel the rest of this control point and pick up a Triglav protector. With that cooldown reduction, Biggie has been stacking up at a rapid pace all of a sudden, going from just a handful of stacks that he's sitting on 13. Mm -hmm. So he's over halfway there. And once he gets that, we'll get the bonus damage. So you stack up the damage, and then once you complete it, you get bonus damage. And so far, he's well on his way. So we'll continue to keep an eye on this as it does ramp up a unique build, to say the least. You know, it also increases Chromie's sight radius, which might make it a bit That's easier true. to try to figure out where Hammer, where the rest of the team is going to be. But it's, they don't have a, a reveal of sorts. But we'll see what uh, the sharking around of Zeratul and uh, well, mainly Zeratul can do here. I think this is maybe the first Dansky Zeratul I've seen. Biggie is stacking up at a rapid pace mm -hmm. on both fronts. Yeah, he's already up over, to 31. Over halfway with his sandblast, too. Yeah, things uh, have picked up quite a bit. But what's also picked up is Simplicity's control and damage in this game. Getting that protector, they stole the turret. They have Sergeant Hammer bottom that's been pushing. They take down the mid and top fort walls, and you can see the bottom under assault as one tower has gone down. Cure finding a hard time engaging here. So we got a full level lead here for Simplicity. Yeah, what I wanted to note too is Simplicity with the draft they have, have a sort of double solo laners with the Phoenix and the Dahaka, which makes it very easy and comfortable to keep Sergeant Hammer with Garrosh and Uther who you want to have with them. But even having Sergeant Hammer hang out in that bottom lane since the Protector pulled up so much of Endemic to defend versus that, got some more siege damage done and they are Winning on a lot of fronts in the second game versus Endemic. Dahak is going to stock in 10. Not quite here yet for Simplicity, but a drag lands nonetheless. Dainsky blinks out to see if he uses that wormhole. Does not. Zuna's going to take another Dragon's Breath coming in there, but the threat of level 10. I will say the one part about Endemic, when you get Echo of Elements completed, which it has, and then you get the 16, and then you get Chromie stacked up, and then Zeratul post 16. So much poke. Endemic becomes a much stronger force the later this game goes. You look at Giant Killer potentially available for Sergeant Hammer, but the damage does not have the same impact as we see this team move forward. So I think that scaling-wise, Endemic does have the advantage. Can Simplicity get a big enough lead to try and avoid that? Yes, excellent point. That's very terrifying what Endemic can do with the Chromian Thrall on this map, and then even the Zeratul do once he gets his 16th leave talent. Well, Temporal Loop obviously wasn't the choice against this style team, mm -hmm. but the fact that Divine Shield is being held, that's one of those opportunities where a Thrall, Zeratul diving he in on Divine you. Divine Storm. Yeah, it, it's a bit more appealing to go Divine Storm. I, I'm not sure how I feel about it, but if all of your members between the armor for Garrosh and the self heal of each member, I guess, Protect yourself, because I'm not helping. I got to cleanse, and that's about it. We've seen teams be willing to go into this build before. The double stun for Dainsky, for the Zeratul, when he dives in. But what uh, it's usually along or paired with is a secondary support. There is no Divine Shield here. I wondered if we would see a, a, a Sundering to try to throw in a Sergeant Hammer. But no, we're gonna stick with an Earthquake here. Earthquake with a Void Prison, or Void Prison to set things up. Earthquake and Slowing Sands is uh, just ridiculous amount of slows. And still stay a while and listen for Deckard Kane. Chromie, of course, time out the pickup here. But for Simplicity, the one thing they do have at 16 for the point you brought up with the stun is that Benediction, which mm. if they can get the lockdown onto one target, once you take one of the, those heroes out, whether it's the Zeratul or the Thrall, your odds go significantly higher. We'll see if they can make that happen as we see an invade potentially. Actually, they're just going to steal the camp because that is off cooldown. Get a couple of towers or turrets for this next control point, which is... It, I wonder if it is because Simplicity are getting really close to 13. They have the global, they have the Dahaka, which means Endemic just might be willing to engage Sans that, but have the extra turrets to try to make this more favorable for them. Kira has taken a lot of damage before this even has gotten underway, but he's thrall. He has his self to sustain, and with the potions of Deckard Kane, 
can start healing back up to full as they get into the point. Well, Tahaka's got 13, and it's an interesting spot because you actually have to come up a little bit sooner because your point of injury is much further away from the team fight than you would, say, on Towers of Doom, where you can be right beside, and he's here. Now he's trying to make an impact here, trying to hold point, but there it is. There's going to be a big taunt. And the purification salvo follows up that, too. Thrall's going to go down immediately, and another drag from Zuna does a lot. <laughs> into the fray, into the time trap. <laughs> it's always funny to see the animations frozen in time, but that 13, as you said, pretty impactful. Thrall went down at the beginning of that, despite Chromie obviously finishing that Dragon's Breath quest. Now sitting at 51 stacks on the baseline Q target. Nine mm -hmm. away, now eight away. Excuse me, that was a double stack, so seven away from getting that clone, which again will help, but getting to the later game as we see the lead starting to distance even further. Two level lead, and now they're gonna turn their attention to the bot lane. Simplicity stretching this out, making it hard for Endemic to get on even footing. And J-Hope, Salvo didn't even go off in that fight. Yeah. It got stopped too, so being able to get that commanding of a lead, Endemic went in without 13. That is arguably the best talent tier to fight down without having, but they wanted to steal the, the turret first, which meant that they were willing to take that fight and in losing it, in losing the protector because Simplicity had charged it back up so fast. Endemic are still missing a lot of their heroic abilities, so they couldn't try to get into another fight. And now they just now have 13, but it's two levels behind, and all of the forts are gone. Well, Dainsky, you can see on the mini-map there, was lurking, trying to see if maybe coming out of that protector they could find an opportunity. Right now, Endemic on those even talent tiers, Gilly, but it won't be for long. A simplicity racing towards 16, and you got to wonder for Endemic, are you going to be able to get to that 16 tier before that next control point? As we see simplicity turning their attention to the helium pole, see if the fight starts here. Team a little bit slow to rotate. Do we get the VP? There's going to be one cleave, but the Divine Shield, you, excuse me, Divine Storm getting the lockdown onto Thrall again. BFG, Zeratul comes in. Gilly, that was a massacre in split-second time against those frontliners for Intimid. Yeah, VP and Earthquake couldn't be used because Divine Storm hit, taunt was a double taunt with them being split up even and both being hit by both of those abilities. That's uh, not how you want that fight to start. It feels like Endemic maybe needs to hit the pause button. It's a little bit panicked, but now, unfortunately for them, they're gonna have to play this out cautiously because they're three levels behind and that control point is bottom where they already don't have a fort. Yeah, the hard part is, is that, you know, the general rotation will be to push that top lane, get experience back. But as we've seen that comeback experience through fort walls, a little bit more difficult. So then you have to push all the way into the fort if you really want to try and get to that 16. And that takes a much longer time. And if we see Sergeant Hammer and team siege down right. that bot lane, then it's a trade that unfortunately you have to take. It's a risky trade because then you have a very small window to fight to get back in. Right. The problem with that that we see every time somebody does that is the other team just takes the keep towers or the keep and then suddenly ends the game with the yeah. protector every time. Like so clockwork. it's not an easy decision to try to make. Maybe we see Endemic with some of these big controlling abilities like Void Prison just take a fight without 16 instead. But the problem is that they have not been in any sort of position to get something done with those abilities, especially with Divine Storm. They're trying to see if somebody's going to try and gank Zuna. They're using the Dino as bait. None taken, because, you know, the other option is is to gank that solo laner, and they're protecting that. Again, that bottom lane is so far pushed out. There's nothing to do, so they're going to chill, hang out for a bit. And um, it's not a lot of action for the viewers at home, but it's uh, definitely, it's like, it's, it's, a, it's a mind game. It's, it's a very strategic element of this game, because nobody's trying to show. Not even Endemic. They're not showing simplicity. They're willing to hold their ground with 16. Simpli Hosty, he's invisible. Here's the moment, and Endemic are only a half level behind. They can soak this up, especially since the lanes have been pushed toward them. Holding the assault camp was very nice. That buys some extra time for simplicity, or gives an extra push toward the top if Endemic choose to ignore it. Well, 16 is going to be here, so they did have enough time in that window to get 16, so they are going to have one fight 
available to them. And if they don't get that, as you said, that protector could potentially be game ending. But if Endemic takes the fight, they are very much back in this game. They pick up a turret camp. They're going to help. You can see the healing pulse available. A couple of turrets here for simplicity. See if they can hold their ground, get another lockdown, and open this fight up with a kill. Drag starts, turret there. Damski's harassing. Zuma is eating a lot of damage. Healing Pulse is going to be there. There's going to be the heal. Earthquake, they're ready to engage. There's going to be the root. Beacon going in deep. Going to drop down the stun. There's going to be the divine, shield, divine Storm. That is another kill there. BP out, though. See if they can turn this around. Yeah, it doesn't matter who they wreck. There is going to be the self-unstoppable into a taunt with the Purification Salvo as K1 Pro walks in and a drag drags back Thrall into the Salvo. A three for one in Simplicity's favor. Dainsky took advantage of that 16. Look at Tiger. Until Tiger with the body blocks, bringing the hammer. That's what I call Tank Uther. Tank Uther indeed. Uh, Deckard Kane, he needs that wheelchair to get away a little bit quicker because that Kane not getting him anywhere. And now the Protector with four members down on the side of Endemic. Do we just sidewall and end here? Or do we just go and take the full mount of experience? Hosty going to receive the healing so that he can siege up behind this Protector. Avoided a lot of the chromie damage. Well, they decided to sidewall but left a little bit, so they're going to go straight to the keep. Still 65% mm -hmm. here for the Protector. Simplicity quickly gaining speed to 20, but not quite there yet. Seven seconds until Deckard Kane is back. 20 is all but here, but Simplicity still stepping forward with the remainder of this Protector's health bar. They're I'm focusing out. heroes and not focusing the core. That is a major loss in damage. I get that the health was low, but when you're prioritizing that kill, I don't think you're going to get the kill that you anticipated. There's going to be... Is it orbital? Yeah, it is or I looked over the same oh, time you man. did, and I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, man. You don't launch that, because I was like, there's no kill target. So yeah. I looked over at the talents, and we've got orbital. Unconquered spirit, although <laughs> K1 Pro has barely been under fire as it is, but that's really going to make him harder to kill. We see a Contagion, too. Contagion can get a lot done versus the very melee-heavy composition that Endemic has. And all the stacks in the world for Big Impact still have not been amounting to too much for Endemic. They have been dealing with the onslaught of the Sergeant Hammer. And no matter how this game ends, Jay Howe, if we are on a map in the game three that even possibly could have a Sergeant Hammer, I bet that gets banned. Seems uh, likely. Is the stun going to miss there? B Kid is going to be stunned in return. Tiger J. Walking forward, Zuna Rack. lands a drag there, see if they can get the lockdown, the taunt's gonna be there. That's gonna be another takedown, Thrall falls. There's nice isolation, nice Divine Storm. That's gonna be a second takedown. Zuna. Who is this guy? Zuna, God, at this point, my goodness. He just was like, guys, can we like just kill them and try and win the game here? Yeah, can we just end the game here? There's no <laughs> Thrall with Earthquake. There's no Void Prison for 30 more seconds. They already took the keeps down. B-Kid knew it was coming and is gonna slow him to the best of his ability. But here comes the BFG to get this party started. Yeah, shields have already fallen. Hosty's gonna siege up on this. The minute they get some minions up here, he's taking his position, Biggie. He's gonna try and drop the bombs, but the bombs are coming at the expense here as Endemic Look starting to fall. There's just nothing you can do. Simplicity going up 2-0 behind the Sergeant Hammer composition. Wait. What? This is a completely different team. It's a completely different Zuna, apparently. Friday, it was a little bit more of a Zuna feast or famine or some other F word out there that might end in Eid. Uh, I had to follow that up really quickly. I was like, wait a but today, <laughs> very different. Yes. Zuna fights. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Zuna fights. Uh, so, <laughs> Sergeant Hammer. What in the uh, again the Chromie? Yeah, you, I, it, it was Chromie trying to take to drop bombs on Sergeant Hammer, and she dropped a lot on Sergeant Hammer. But the survivable nature of that team, it was more than enough. The armor that Tiger JK gives. From his heals, the burst heal, you know, you drop the one combo and then you have all of the heals to heal Hosty right back up. 
Hosty was very much aware of when he needed to pop that spell armor and to get the armor that he needed. Again, the Zeratul Thrall, Zeratul really doesn't amp up. Dansky actually had a really good trade in that bottom control point, and I think it thwarted a lot, and he actually got a kill there. And that might have saved the potential end of the game, because if he had gone down without that, that's probably game over with five members pushing there. But the Zeratul, with the Thrall, trying to engage in that, it's super difficult. Divine Storm. Heads up. It's hit or miss, but that was a hit. He hit <laughs> a lot of people yeah. with that. There were a lot of hammers being thrown. Simplicity is up two games in the series over Endemic. They are one game away from closing it out. We're going to head to a commercial break. But after that, we continue with our final series of the HGC Weekend.